Hey YouTubers, Brian here, 68 Corvette. I've got a new wiring harness I'm gonna be installing. I'll probably show, you know, different videos as I go because uh, I'm gonna be busy and I won't be able to connect them all together. So I'll probably do like four to six videos on this. It'll just be a little series. But anyway, I've got this, uh, it's a Jags harness. It's the 10411. And uh, it seems like a pretty decent harness. The, um, the strangest thing about it, to me is that it seems to be like three rows here and they're separate rows and then this really isn't easily connected to anything. The connection was the only problem that I'm seeing is, is tying it down to the firewall or you know wherever you're putting it. So it came with some cheesy little spacers that are right here. They're plastic and you know there's like four of them but this you know, there's six holes total here. So I don't know. I think I'm going to make my own bracket on the backside, real nice uh, metal, metal bracket or something like that to connect it. The other thing I'm trying to do is to bring it up. Um, the battery goes there. I'm trying to put it in the other hole there next to it. You can't quite see it, but um, I really don't want it under the dash this time because these Corvettes go pretty deep under that dash there. So the big problem was to see if the wires would go the full length to where they need to go. And it seems like they're gonna be pretty decent as far as the length over there. We'll get back to that in a minute as far as setting this up and how I did it. We'll look at a few of the other things that um, you know came with it. Um, these came with it, kind of the cheesy connectors. I just, I don't like them at all. So I had ordered a box of these really nice connectors that you can, you know, kind of heat shrink onto the wires and they're not very expensive. Well worth it. I, I really like those. Some of the tools that you'll be needing if you're going to do something like this, you know, there's a, there's a volt meter, you know, this one's a really good one, an old fluke that's, you know, I've had forever. And then you can get these at like Harbor Freight, dirt cheap. Sometimes they give them away practically so that works pretty good and then i've got different you know wire crimpers cutters different size these these are cutters with crimpers on them and needle noses and just another little a little cutter and some um some strippers here i did have an automatic stripper somewhere which is pretty cool but i can't find it so we're going to go with that there's not a lot of stripping involved with this except for the ends where they go um different ends you know, are going to be required to be put on these. So you'll have to strip a little bit off, but you know, it's already connected to the back of the fuse box in case you were wondering. So you don't have to, I know some painless wires, like painless wiring I've done in the past, you had to um, basically tie it into the, screw it on the ends onto the fuse box, which was terrible. I hated that. So pretty nice harness, except for the fuse box mounting, the fuse box mounting. Um, some of these wires are really nice and thick. This one is just super thick. Um, this is the left rear turn signal. They're all wire. They're all labeled on the wires. It's pretty cool. You can just follow them and follow them. And follow, no matter where you cut them, there's more as you go. So one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting is where they split here. Let's see. Right there they split for the left and right okay so that would be for the tail the tail lights tail lights all right but the odd thing was like here i do tape these up so they're easier to find a lot of times right there backups here there is no split at all so i'm gonna have to take a wire and run it from one backup light there to the other backup, which isn't a big deal. It's just strange how they how they split some of it up and other ones, they didn't split up. So get ready for that. Um, some of the wires like this power wire, this powers the fuse box right here. It would go to your starter normally, but I'm putting it to my battery. It also says battery because I've got the battery right next to the fuse box I'm going to. So I'm gonna be cutting that short. So, down here, it gives you a list of all the pieces and parts, which I'm probably gonna use a lot of my own pieces here. Uh, I wanted to show you the old harness. Got the light. It's here. 
I was ready to use it, so I labeled everything and taped it all together so I could reuse it. But the wires were just so thin and so beat up. And things were cracked. And my fuse box itself, the fuse box was broken. And it was just so crackly and overheated and old. You know, I didn't like it at all. So I pulled this out. I did keep it. <clears throat> because you might need plugs like this you could probably order the pigtails new but if you don't want to do that you can cut these into pigtails and use them or you can take the little connectors out and put the wires straight into them if you wanted to do that too so you know don't throw that away until you're completely done and everything works so other things about this that i liked Gives you the basic installation. I have, they tell you to lay it out like I did. You can lay it out on the floor. I've laid it, you know, as you can see, across the, the top of the vehicle just to make sure my lengths are gonna be okay um, as I go along. And then um, down here, it gets interesting. It's gonna go through the firewall on this side like it did originally. So I took everything on this side, put it here. And everything that goes on this side of the lights, I put them there. <clears throat> now I do have a kit. It's different than the harness I bought it separate. This is a kit here that uses a relay setup right here to really make the lights have a lot of power to them. It uses a really nice hot wire right there you power these lights the headlights directly from the battery power so if you want to run some racing lights or you know some powerful leds you can do that so it'll be wired into that that's going to change things a little but you can see here you know i wired up the horn and high beams and i did take these if they were a pair a left and right i paired them off so for instance that's a that's your pair of low beams a left and right and so I paired them. It, it'll pair them automatically up here, which is pretty cool if it's not a left and right. So here, I mean, it's gonna be a left and right, but if it's not switched, this is just, you know, gonna be on at all times. They paired it themselves right there, which is pretty nice. So you don't have to splice anything in. They did a nice, it's a pretty nice job of, of doing that. Okay, so some of these wires here, I wind them up if I'm not using them right away or they're not gonna be used with my system. Um, this neutral safety switch is huge, it's long. So I'm not gonna be probably, you know, needing all that. I don't even know where this neutral safety switch is on this uh, car. I don't know if it's in the clutch of the Muncie or if I'm actually going to use a neutral safety switch yet. So that's wound up there. Let's see, anything you're not using or probably will never use just wind it right up. For instance, over here, um, what was this one? Fuel pump for you guys running an electric fuel pump. I'm not gonna cut this off of the fuse box. I'm gonna tuck it into the car somewhere safe because this may go to like a sniper system or something like that later. Right now it's a carburetor. So I'm not gonna cut that off of here. There's some pretty nice stuff. You know, this power antenna, this is a huge dome light wire. I don't know where they expect your dome light to be, you know, but that's gonna be, I can put that some kind of a dome light in this car and so forth. And um, third brake light here, which is pretty cool. This doesn't have a third brake light because this was back when, you know, you died like a man. I may add a little brake light in the rear window there because I got rear-ended in my other Corvette, totaled out and really messed me up. So I might put something for a little extra safety. I live on a really bad road and uh, I don't need another totaled out Corvette. So over here, I like how the wires are labeled. Wire 45, white, dome light, tells you where it comes from and where it goes. And when you're in the middle of this, sometimes it gets confusing. Like if these are all wires that are going to things, but when you get up here, you're like, oh, to the, you know, the oil pressure gauge. And you're like, oh, this goes to the gauge itself. No, this goes through the firewall to the sending unit. And then this one over here, one of these will go to the gauge itself. So you gotta pay attention that you don't run the wrong wire to the wrong place. So you will see that a lot of these, you know, you'll wanna make them where they're gonna go through your firewall. There's a grommet here 
to put it through. Don't use it without the grommet. It could short out and burn your, your project car right down to the ground. So that's what I've done. I've just kind of taken these that I'm not using right now. The important ones to me, obviously, were the lights, the horn, things that, you know, in some states that have communist inspection stickers, you know, you, you would absolutely want them to work. So that's how I did that. I want those things to definitely work. Electric fan, I don't have one. I might add a, a little pusher fan if I can fit it in there with my hood. I don't know. It's pretty nice, but you can use these wires for other things. So if you don't use the electric fan, that's gonna be a hot wire to hot wire in anything else that you like to hot wire in. It's nice, it's got radios. I got one somehow with power door locks. And uh, I don't know why, but that's there. You could use them probably for something else too if you wanted to. It's got a nice color schematic here. Um, tells everything in there, pretty cool. It tells it for Mopar, GM, HEI. I mean, that's basically one. These car, old cars will run on essentially two wires. They'll run on an HEI wire and they'll run on a one wire alternator. And of course you need a little starter wire to get it all going, but they'll essentially run on two wires if you want it to. And that's how I like to do it. This is an alternator hookup, but um, I don't need that. Mine's already wired with one big wire. So I'm not even gonna bother with that. Electric fan relay. You know, right there for a radiator fan. I, I never run fans, electric fans, if I can help it only because I put in a lot of motors when the electric fan blew or the thermostat didn't work and the motor exploded and it was done for. So uh, I like it when I start my car, the fan spins, but you know, that's up to you. A nice wiper switch layout here. A little dome light switch layout right there. Schematic for that. Gauge cluster, this is when it'll get a little interesting because you've got a wire, you know, like mine, I'm gonna to try to keep the gauge wiring together and just put a hot wire to the existing ones because they're not, they're not beat up by heat and oils. They're in pretty good shape. So I may end up doing that or going into it individually like this. So uh, ignition switch. Some of these are dash mounted like mine because it's a 68. And then you've got your regular GM one, which is pretty cool because it just plugs, you know, you put the plug on there and plug it right in and you're in business. And headlight switch. This is your column plug here for flat, like a GM style early plug. It's cool. Um, here's your tail, tail light or tail group and fuel pump relay. So on this car, it's got a couple lights in the back. Um, I hadn't found the one yet for a light. Uh, I guess it does have a license plate light here coming off of something or another. So I'll have to pull, pull it off of probably, it looks like I'm pulling it off of the tail lights. When the tail lights come on, that will come on, but I don't see a, a separate one for that, which, you know, I'm gonna have to add. And then you can get optional, you know, parts and pieces for it, different switches and pigtails and LEDs and all kinds of stuff if you want to get into that. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. As we go, you know, one thing you try not to do is step on all your wires, like those wires there, don't step on them and grind them into the, the ground. Like I said, these are, these are well put together as far as this one's upside down, but it says headlight group. So these, everything in here, goes up to the headlights right there and there's different groups so you once you follow them out i put these little tapes like i said earlier tape them together and tape them straight so there's no i, I hate them when they get it like a uh, rat trap where they're all just wound up tight and confused i'm really picky about running all the way back to the fuse box making sure it's one long nice strand going to where i'm going i do have i bought it separate is some of this covering here this is the large well not this is the medium and then there's a large and a small i'm going to order the small you can get them chrome and different colors and so forth too this car is you know kind of a hot rod one so it's not going to be all original it's just got it's been way too hot rodded to really care but i am going to try to hide a lot of the wires clean up the wires that are hanging there and you know we're going to try to hide most of it i don't want wires all over the place so when you do do this, you're gonna to try to leave a little extra wire at the fuse box because coming up short's a real pain. 
you know, you've got to add four inches. So try to, add, you know, leave a little bit where the fuse box goes and kind of tuck it up there. I'm not saying three feet, but just a little in case you have to pull a little bit more out. And uh, as you run your wires, you want to pull all the slack out so you don't have a bunch of slack in the middle of your run. And you're like, what that, you know, what happened here? Why does it, you know, if, in other words, you don't want the slack like that right there. And then what do you do with that slack? So make sure you pull from the fuse box and pull that slack out, tape it there, tape it here. And that way you have a really nice straight run. You know, anywhere you want to connect, you can solder it or use those connectors. I've even seen those, um, where'd they go? All right, so I've seen these connectors here, different kinds where they're three, they have three different legs on them. So if you have to add a leg, like I was talking about for the rear tag light, you know, license plate light that it actually has three, three offshoots of that has a third leg on it. So it's kind of cool. You know, you don't, you don't have to uh, kind of hokey that up. You don't want to be hokey in this new stuff up and, and then worrying about it later. So you're going to just try to do a good job as you go putting it all together. Slow and easy. You don't want to be hung over doing this. You know, don't want a, a bitchy wife or an asshole boyfriend or husband bothering you while you're doing this. You know, you got to really put a lot of uh, thought into it as you go. And sometimes it'll get confusing when you first start you're like oh this is easy it's all wire, you know it's all labeled the wires and the next thing you know you're into the gauges going you know what the heck's going on or i'm pushing the pushing the brake light the brakes and the lights aren't going on you know what what's my problem here so you know you've got this is a fiberglass car you know i've got every single thing has to be grounded and it's not like a regular metal car so you know that's an issue there one of the things that happened to me and it was a little odd was that I was, when I originally had the old harness in here, I can show you some of the old harness. Here's the old harness. It's, you know, still under the dash for now. So what happened was I would push on the brake and I'd have no brake lights and it was really pissing me off. Well, come to find out, I took the covers off the back and there were no bulbs in the sockets. Well, then I put bulbs in the sockets and come to find out the back of the sockets had been butchered. And, uh, you know, that was no good either. So, you know, there was missing, the horn wouldn't blow. Well, there was no horn underneath, underneath where the headlights go. And I didn't see that because they flip open and they weren't flipping open to view the horn. So you can see the old, the old glass fuses right there. And then somebody hacked up the section that goes to the rear of the car because the connector got burned or broken. So they put all those in. I'm not saying they did a terrible job. It's just not really super nice, you know. And then as you think it's easy, you're going to get into something like this. You know, this is going to be your headlight switch. And you're like, holy cow, you know, what goes to where? You can actually see on this headlight switch, see if I can get it to focus, you can see some like burns and crackles and really crazy looking stuff. People cut the wires. So this is why we're going through this and getting, getting rid of majority of all this old wiring here. Um, ignition, same thing. You can, another point of, you know, craziness, like that big wire going to the smaller wire. You know, you've got, you've got to deal with all this when you put this wiring in on this ignition switch so you got to know where they go and another place that people hate and i know that can be a pain is this spot right here i taped it up here temporarily by the way but this goes to your steering column to your blinkers horn and you know hazards and all that kind of stuff so that you're going to have to make that work for your new wiring harness and you know you might leave you know these ones here coming out of the wheel but the other end of that, you're going to have to, you know, put them all in there and make that work. So anyway, this is the excitement that I'm going to be uh, checking in with as we go piece by piece. And I'll let you know how this wire and harness works out. Sorry about all the bouncing and moving on this, but there's a lot of pieces and parts to this video. And I'm kind of just taking some extra time to do the video for everybody so they can see what goes on with it. I've, I've done a bunch of other cars and jeeps i've wired so this isn't my first one at all so 
you know, if you have any questions, post them below and, uh, you know, please like and subscribe on my channel and help me out. You guys have a great day. Talk to you later.